Okay, we're coming back and uh, last time I said I would talk about schema upgrades. So I'm going to walk through schema upgrades um, and kind of give you a sense of what's possible. It's actually very flexible and um, I mean, you could use the system just for schema upgrades and nothing else and that would actually be kind of cool. Um, the schema upgrade system um, is meta like, uh, like the tests were in that the schema upgrader tends to generate um, CQL and I've actually I've started with a sample schema here um, that I'm just showing and uh, I prepared a few things mostly so as to not fumble I actually tried doing this without making any preparations and just doing this um, all by hand but uh, like the video ended up just full of too many stupid typos that make it made it take three times longer and that weren't at all educational so um, and much as I kind of like this unscripted form because I don't know it has a certain charm to it um, at some point it just gets stupid. So I prepared a few things uh, just to kind of get us started and then I'm going to walk through other stuff um, and hopefully that will be, you know, it'll be clear and, and uh, I'm not cheating too much. So I've started with just a very simple schema that you can see right here. It's just a, a table, uh, table A, um, and it's got an ID and uh, it's got like you know, ID integer, primary key, name, text, and that's just really super, super simple. And I want to give you a sense of how that turns into an update file. And here there's no revisioning, there's nothing new. This is just kind of the baseline schema. So uh, probably you're going to start here. I mean, you probably have more than one table, but you start with some set of tables that are sort of unannotated and that's kind of whatever your baseline is. Um, your baseline could be nothing. Uh, or your baseline could be one or two tables, it's whatever it is. Um, so, and um, to process the baseline schema or any, indeed any schema into an upgrader, we use CQL in this sort of new way. Um, we use a different result type. Remember last time we used test helpers, we do schema upgrade here, and we'll see actually in general, we, we need more than that, but schema upgrade generates a schema upgrade script, and we need to give it the name of the procedure that you wanna call for the schema upgrade script. So the main procedure will be called right here, my update, okay? Global proc is generally useful um, for any kind of file. If there's any code that's not in a proc, uh, like some calls or whatever that are sort of loose, they need to be bundled in something. So um, you specify what the global what the global proc is, you can give it a name and of all the loose um, SQL or, or uh, control flow will go into that. Um, and that actually turns out to be really handy, like if you're making a file that has a bunch of tests in it or something, you can just have the test loose wrap with a macro and the whole things, they, they all go into a global proc. Um, so it, it kind of has this sort of JavaScript-ish kind of feel to it where you can have loose stuff um, and it all gets aggregated and uh, the procedures are, you know, emitted before that. So you can call the procedures, you get the idea. So it's very useful. And we need that again here. And actually we'll see my update is used for the global proc and it's also used to make things unique. Okay, and uh, like always, the code gen parameter has the output file. So here we're gonna make update.sql, which we just did. Um, and uh, and actually um, this command here, look at that, it says up.temp and that's schema.sql. So I'm actually already giving away a little something. Um, if we look at up.temp, well, I'm, I'm, I don't want to go there just yet. So uh, trust me, up.temp has basically the same files here. Let me let me um, let me just do this uh, schema.sql there. Okay, so now no cheating for sure. Okay, great. And we'll see in a moment what's going on with that. Okay, so hold 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 your horses on up.temp. That's coming soon. I should have pasted this line rather than the other one at the start, but anyway, it's fine. So let's have a look at what's in update.sql. There's quite a few things in here, and I'm gonna walk them uh, walk you through them uh, from the bottom up, um, sort of inside out, if you will. And um, then we won't have to talk about a lot of them afterwards. Mostly, I'm just gonna walk you through every little helper here. There's just not that many. And uh, that way it'll just demystify everything about what's going on here. So, okay, it's got um, a little slug here that you can change. Oh, and notice, uh, look at this. Okay, this copyright header. The CQL I'm using is the internal one, not the open source one. So whatever, it's fine. Um, yours won't have this. Um, the internal one emits this. Uh, the OSS one doesn't emit that. So I'm demonstrating with the internal one. There's not gonna be any difference except for the copyright header. Um, so whatever, it's fine. Um, so disregard the copyrights, you won't see those in your output. Um, so 
uh, in fact, maybe I should just, no, I'm, forget it. I don't want to derail everything. So, uh, okay, great. So disregard the copyright notices. Okay, so what do we got here? The first directive that we see is this thing, okay? And this tells us a little something funny. In upgrade scripts, it's normal for the table to appear in very any given table or whatever schema to appear in maybe different forms. So um, what this says is to disregard uh, any create tables or what or whatnot f that are inside of procedures for purposes of schema declaration. So they don't have to be consistent. And we'll see that in just a moment, okay? So, um, and as you can see, the usual table declarations are here. Well, I, we just skipped over one. So this declares SQLite master, okay? It's a loose it's a loose create table. So as always, it's a declaration. And we need to use SQLite master to find stuff in it. This is the declaration for our table. Remember, that's just a declaration, okay? And here is uh, a declaration for um, my update schema SQL QL facets. Okay, so this is where we're going to track what's going on with regards to the schema. And remember, this is at the top level still. So the fact that it's if mine, uh, if not exists is incidental, it would have been the same. Uh, it's not really going to get created. So you know that would have been equivalent as far as the declaration goes. Um, later, we'll see we do create table if not exists on that table. So the same thing gets printed into the into the declaration section for convenience. But um, all this does is declare this table. Okay, so we're going to have this table, my schema facets, and we're also going to have a temp table. Okay, that's exactly the same. Uh, and uh, facets and version. Okay, so these two are are exactly exactly the same. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna see we're gonna use this to, to do differences later. Okay, so let's go through some of the helper procedures now that are going to be used for all of this. Okay, so. Um, okay, so this is going to call, uh, this little helper checks to see if a particular column already exists in master. So you give it the table name and uh, the declaration text, and it tells you whether or not that thing is present. Um, and it does so by just um, checking for um, if there's a matching thing in SQLite master where the table name matches and uh, the uh, SQL matches the pattern that's provided. So the SQL comes from uh, SQLite master, okay? Right? So this is just looking for a piece of a table declaration. Um, ah, sorry, and this is gonna be used for a column declaration, not a table declaration. Because um, for tables, we can just use if not exists, but for columns, you have to check yourself because there is, there is no add column if not exists. Okay, so this is gonna create the schema facets table, okay? And it's just exactly the same as the declaration you saw before, except for um, it's uh, it's going to actually do the create because it's inside the body of the procedure. Um, ordinarily, we wouldn't need both. We could have just included this right here, um, and that would have served as both the create and the declaration. But because we're in this wonky mode, the creates don't count as declarations. And again, we'll see. That's because some of the creates will be not the final shape um, of the table and so they can't be assumed to be consistent with the final destination um, in the context of an upgrade because probably you're going to get the baseline plus the upgrades and we'll see that later. Okay, uh, great. So this is uh, save CQL facets. Okay, so this is really super simple. Uh, drop the save table if it exists. It's a temp table, um, but if you're rerunning um, the script, um, maybe the temp table already exists. So it just first it drops the temp table, then it recreates the temp table. Okay, and then it inserts from the um, inserts into this table from the main table. Okay, so we just made a complete copy of schema facets, and we're going to use that to diff the table later, so we can report what we did. Okay, so we'll we'll be reporting all the differences um, as part of the upgrade, and you'll see that later. Okay, my update set schema facet version. Okay, so this is um, insert or replacing a view uh, a row into uh, SQL schema facets, and you just specify the facet and the version, and they get replaced. So here they are as the arguments, facet and version. So that's just basically setting that row there. Okay, inserting it if it needs to be, or, or replacing it. And we can use insert or replace safely because there's only the two columns anyway. So we're completely um, in, we're completely replacing a row. We don't have to worry about weirdness with insert or replace. Uh, so upsert isn't required here. Okay. Uh, my update get facet version. Okay. Well, that's pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to specify the name of the facet, and we have an out argument for its value, 
and we're just going to set it to be um, the select from that table where the facet is the facet limit one. Okay, and notice it's wrapped in try catch. Uh, that's because this could fail. Okay, this could fail if there is no row. It will also actually it'll fail if there's two rows. Um, that's impossible given our schema, and I put a limit one here because, because paranoid. Um, but this should this shouldn't be necessary because uh, this is the key. So uh, fair enough. If it finds nothing, you're going to get this. Okay, and so this never is going to return an error because if this fails, this is going to run and that's always going to succeed. So you're going to get negative one by default. Great. Now, I could have done more magic here um, to make it so that it, you know, does a union all and a limit one or whatever. Uh, but rather than complicate that, um, we just did this begin try, begin catch. These are very economical. Um, there's no real exception object. Um, normally, what happens when this fails is it goes to the end of the procedure, uh, which is the cleanup procedure. If you do um, this begin try, begin catch, you get an additional label for this point in the code. And in here, instead of going to the exit of the procedure, it jumps to there and it, it ripples out. Okay. So, um, and then uh, be, because it ran this, then the success code will be good and we'll be in good shape. Okay. Uh, next, my update CQL get version CRC. Okay, great. So um, we, in the facets table, we also store CRCs. And we if uh, if we go up here, the overall CRC for the schema is this number. Okay, it's a 64-bit CRC. Um, I forgot the name of the one I use, but it's it's um, a popular one um, and it's a standard CRC. Okay, so let's go back down to here. All right, so um, this is the version number and that's going to have a CRC associated with it. And this is the CRC that we want to, uh, that we want to get. And we're, so it's an out argument. Okay. So we're going to compose the facet by concatenating the version number and CQL schema V whatever. Okay. And get one row. And this just saves us a lot of strings. Um, we could have done this by hard coding those strings in the uh, in the upgrade script. And since it's generated, it would have been just as easy to generate strings, but um, strings are expensive. So, uh, well, I mean, there could be potentially hundreds of these. So in, in the interest of economy, this is more economical than um, having all those strings. So great. Um, so you can, you can do this by version number and it concatenates the string for you. And then it just gets it from the facets table. So some of the facets are version number CRCs. Okay. And once again, you get this negative one here. Note that that means there's a possibility of collision with, uh, CRCs of negative one, which is maybe a weakness in the script. Um, but it's really, uh, this is, uh, you know, one and two to the 64. So, uh, wonky stuff happens with collisions as it is. So we tend to assume there's no collisions. If someone, um, some, uh, aspiring person wants to make this a little bit more robust, um, we could do that. Uh, that would be a pretty easy change. Maybe I could open an issue to make that a little bit robust. Okay. Uh, sets, the sets version CRC is exactly the same, uh, flip side, just insert or replace. All it's doing is composing this key, same as before with the version. Okay. And once again, just for economy, so you can have integers instead of, um, instead of strings. So we don't have to have so many string literals and this string literal will actually be shared between these two places, right? That one and that one, it'll be shared. So there's one literal. So it'll make the script a little bit smaller. Groovy. Okay. Uh, here is uh, a thing that should be deleted and, um, it's here for legacy reasons. Um, once upon a time, there were a bunch of triggers with that started with the name TR underscore underscore um, from our old schema before we started doing this upgrade. And we wanted to make sure to clean them up. So this thing lives on. Um, triggers that begin with TR underscore underscore are deleted uh, without even knowing what they are. It searches for them and deletes them. And, and it actually uh, generates a drop trigger dynamically. Okay, so I definitely don't recommend calling this proc. Um, and, uh, basically that's formatting some SQL, some SQL and executing it dynamically. And this actually happens a lot in C, um, but it's a, it's a no, no in SQL. You really don't want to do this and it's hard to do anything with it. So all you could really do is imperatives, um, cause you don't know what shape it is and the return, return codes are wonky and stuff. So, um, so don't do this. You can expect this to be deleted. It's a legacy. Um, and it really has no purpose anymore. Um, the, 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 all the databases that had this stuff in it are long since upgraded. So there's just no reason. Um, so you expect this to go away. Okay. Um, soon, maybe next week. 
Great, okay, uh, the first thing that actually does real schema stuff, create baseline schema. There's our schema and it's obviously gonna create it. Okay, so this installs the baseline schema. Uh, and then if there's any upgrade procedures, which there aren't in this case, uh, they would be declared right here. Here's a procedure to drop all the triggers um, and all we do here is drop the legacy triggers because there were no triggers in our schema. Um, typically what we do before we run the schema is we drop any existing triggers uh, that we're managing um, so that there are no triggers uh, live during the uh, processing of the update. And then we'll put them back. Okay, and my perform needed upgrades. Okay, so let me skip this for now. Uh, there's one place we need to, one, this is the second last procedure we're gonna see. So now we can see, I think it's more natural if we see the, the root. So keep that one in, in your head. Okay, this is where we start my update. Remember that was the name of the global proc we specified. And we declare a schema CRC. And we try to create the schema facets table if it's needed, okay? And then we call uh, this guy to fetch the, la uh, the last known uh, schema CRC, okay? And it's gonna go here and schema CRC. Okay, so we're gonna just fetch the overall schema CRC. And if that schema CRC is not our master, then we're gonna do the update. So if it matches, that means we already ran. There's nothing to do here. It's nothing to see. And uh, we can just go um, and we're gonna emit no differences. Otherwise, we're gonna uh, do that. And this call returns a select. So both of these actually are gonna uh, return a select. So this is a, a result and we either get the result from this call or from this select. And we'll see that uh, the, uh, the upgrader returns the differences. In fact, right here, this is the end of the upgrader and you can see that it's gonna select uh, from the facets table and left outer join uh, to the save table. And if they're different, then it's going to um, uh, emit them, right? So that is select the facet where they're not equal. It's using is not so that no still match. Okay, so this is what's going to produce the differences. So either way, we're going to end up with the select, and the selects are of the same shape, um, and that's guaranteed. Otherwise, you get semantic errors. So now let's look at the actual upgrader. Okay, and this is this is the bulk of it, um, and we'll see this generalizes, uh, but it always has the same shape. We're 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 going to see gen just exactly what the shape will be for all of these guys. So first thing it's going to do is get the overall schema version number, okay? And if the schema version number is um, bigger than the version number we think we're on, we think we're on zero, and that's hard-coded in this script, okay? So because um, we noticed what schema version number was mentioned in our schema, and remember this was just baseline, so there is no version number, so that's version zero. Uh, so we think we're on version zero. Uh, if the thing reports that were somewhere bigger than zero, then it just says, hey, wait a minute, uh, this is a downgrade. I, you know, someone they're like, they're already on three and I'm an upgrade for zero, like weird stuff is happening. So um, if that happens, you have to do, I don't know, whatever, some sort of recovery logic, because um, it's usually not safe to go backwards. Lots of stuff can go wrong. So it just says, boom, downgrades detected. Okay. So um, if a downgrade is not detected, then you're gonna get the actual upgrade happening, okay? So it's gonna save away those facets, remember this helper. And then it's gonna drop all the triggers, okay? And then it's going to install the baseline schema, okay? And it's gonna check the CRC of the baseline schema um, in the baseline schema facet. Okay, so here we do get version CRC zero, that's the baseline version. Okay, and out in schema version, and we have a CRC for just the baseline. Okay, and uh, if that CRC changes, or it's, you know, probably it'd be the case that you're going to get negative one back because the baseline hasn't been installed. But in the event that the baseline somehow changed, uh, we would attempt to reinstall the baseline. Okay, so in here we call uh, install baseline schema, and then we set the CRC to be the magic CRC. Okay. So, and that's the CRC we got from changing the baseline. Now, actually you'll discover it's super hard to change the baseline, um, basically impossible unless you cheat um, be with when you have the normal mechanisms in place. And I'm gonna go over those shortly. But for now, all you need to know is like everything else, we check the CRC and if the CRC doesn't match, we do the actions. 
Okay, so then we're going to set our version number to zero, and we're going to set the overall schema to the overall schema number, and then produce the differences. Great. So that's pretty much the simplest installation schema you could possibly have. Okay, and let's just see what happens when we do it. Okay. Uh, oh, I made edits, but they're not important. Okay, so um, I have built the upgrader that does this, um, and uh, I can just here. Uh, uh, there's several steps to doing this, um, and I'm going to walk you through the script in just a moment, but I've built the upgrader that does this for now. Uh, so I'm going to actually blow away the DB that I have, which I've creatively called DB, and I'm going to call, uh, what did I call it? I think it's called just, just up or update. Uh, update. Oh, it's called schema demo, S demo. Okay, S demo. Okay, great. Okay, so. Um, and in a moment, we'll see what that what those uh, results are because we've wired the thing up, uh, and you can see it cre it uh, is reporting the differences, and uh, so it added some new facets, and I just printed out you know the the facets that changed right there. Okay, so SQL schema v0, SQL schema version, and SQL schema CRC. Great. So that's what got added to the facet table, and um, if we look at that guy right now, let's do SQL 3 DB and say dot schema. Okay, so we can see it has two tables, table A, which was correctly installed, and my update SQL schema facets, okay, uh, which has uh, the text and the version number. Okay, and we could, you know, we could do select star from A, okay, we're going to get a whole lot of nothing because it's empty, and we could do select star from my update SQL schema facets, okay, and we get all our stuff. So there's our version number and CRC and everything's good to go. So we're all set. That's the sort of minimal um, schema that you could uh, install. Okay, but how do you do this really? Okay, because there's there's more protections that you need. So let me now show you a little bit more about what's going on under the hood. Okay, and I've made a little uh, script for doing all this, and uh, it's very straightforward. But probably you would do this with a make file and a real thing. But I put it in a loose batch file to um, to kind of illustrate it. So first, let's look at the at the program main because you remember you always have to do a main. Okay, so um, I'm doing pound include do update.h. We haven't seen that guy yet. We'll see him in just a second. And we made a database, uh, which we just open up and we whine if we can't make it. And then we do the update and we whine if that fails. Um, and then we close it. And we don't whine if the close fails. We just exit. Okay, so main is very boring. Do update is going to do all the work. Okay, and um, do update. Okay, so let's look at do update.sql. Okay, so. This is a little helper here. Now notice it's doing update, pound include update.inc. So already we're doing preprocessor macros. This is normal for CQL. The normal thing you do is run it through the preprocessor first. That really helps a lot, gives you a ton more flexibility. And I'm just started doing that in this example. These are typical usages. So um, here we're pulling in the declarations for update. Okay, and update is remember recall is the thing we generated, and I'll show you how update.inc got uh, created in just a second. We're kind of going backwards, so uh, that's going to do our declarations. So do update is going to uh, do a try catch. Okay, if it if the if the catch fails, it says upgrade failed, and actually I should do throw here so that it returns failure. Okay, that would be more correct. So I'll just leave that for now. So in the success case, we're just going to say, hey, we're performing an update. And then we're going to make a cursor for call my update. So that does the update. And remember, my update returns a result set. Um, so we're going to just loop over that result set uh, and say, hey, we're reporting the differences. And uh, we're going to do loop fetch C, call printf. And this is a new helper we actually added recently, uh, just last week, CQL cursor format. Um, this is syntactic sugar, and it takes the cursor and makes um, a... Uh, print statement that formats the fields of that cursor, whatever they may be. Okay, so if what I, I didn't even have to know what the fields were, and you'll see what that expands to uh, in just a second. But basically, it turns into um, a printf statement with some case whens uh, for if the fields are null, and it converts all the numerics into strings and then formats them up. Um, I don't recommend this for production code because it's kind of uh, loosey goosey, uh, but it's great for this stupid demo. And um, by loosey goosey, I mean it's like 
it's a big fat win statement, so it, it's not very economical. And and typically you don't want this sort of random cursor formatting, but it's great for this demo and it's 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 great for test code um, and it's great for debugging. If you just want to pr print your cursor on the quick, you can just do this kind of thing, you know, and see it. Um, fabulous, okay. So, uh, and if that all works, we print done. Okay, so this is the guy that is gonna, you know, wrap the update and he's gonna actually make it happen. Okay, and that made it a little simpler to call it from main because um, the updater has no results and so we didn't have to grab the result set. But we could have got the result set just like last time. It's just a result set and we could have used the getters to read what's in there and done whatever we wanted with them. Okay, and so now we need to see what? Update.ink next. Okay, let's look at update.ink. What's that? Update.ink. Okay, look at that. So this is, and all of these have the Facebook copyright. So again, that won't be there uh, when you use the internal version. Um, I'm uh, when you use the OSS version. I, I'm I'm do using happen to be using the internal build because uh, I copied it, which is anyway. Um, I shouldn't have done that, but I don't want to uh, ruin my life. So okay. Um, so here's a bunch of things, right? These are the declarations for all of the procedures that were in the schema upgrader. Okay, so this is sort of an automatically generated .h file. Like, imagine uh, if C made the .h files for you automatically from the .c file, so you never coded your own .h file, right? Um, that's what this is. Um, and you, you get it by adding generate exports as a command line flag, and you just specify a file, and then th that's a way for you to refer to the contents of some other file without having to type all the prototypes yourself. And in this case, we just we just want this one, right? Uh, my update. And yeah. Get facet version, get there, drop, install, drop all triggers, update perform needed triggers, yep. So pretty straightforward. Okay, so notice this funky syntax here, this, is not an argument, right? See that? Args would go here, okay? So this is saying it returns a result set and the result set has one column, the facet name text, okay? So um, that's helpful. And because it returns a result set like that, it, you implicitly know that it's gonna need a DB when you call it and so forth. Um, and so the code generation on the other side when importing it knows everything it needs to know to make these calls, okay? Uh, for instance, this guy here, has no um, uh, reason to assume that it needs a database, right? Because it's, it's it could be a, just a void thing. Um, using transaction says it requires a database. This is a database proc. So this is just notation. I didn't want to add new keywords. Um, so this notation simply means the C version of this has a hidden DB parameter and it returns a success code. Okay, so these ones actually take DB parameters. Um, if it If it was this, uh, that means it's just a procedure, you know, that maybe prints something or in, and not, it doesn't use the database in any way, shape, or form. So, so it's not needed. So some of these have this using transaction notation um, anywhere where it's uh, not obvious. Uh, things that return result sets um, uh, implicitly use the database, so the using transaction would be redundant. And so on, in out of economy. In fact, it looks like every single thing is marked using transaction except for this one. Yeah. Okay. Because it's the only one that returns a result set. Great, uh, so all the others have a DB parameter. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the, uh, the the script that made all this. I think that's a good thing to look at next. It's called up.sh. Okay, so this is the typical way that you do this. Um, you can do this more economically, uh, but I've kind of uh, open coded it all. Okay, so we have this file up.sql. Okay, wait, abort. Let's look at up.sql first. Up.sql is what's driving all this, okay? And look what it's doing. Pound include schema.sql at previous schema, and then pound include previous.sql, okay? And this is where I give away the, the second part of this whole thing. Another important part of the validation is that it looks at the previous schema that you had and then the current schema, and it will um, report errors if you try to make changes that cannot be reasonably upgraded using uh, the kinds of alterations and whatnot that uh, SQLite allows. So uh, as we'll see in the script, okay? And uh, at this moment, previous.sql is the same 
as uh, schema.sql, okay? And again, disregard those copyright notices. Um, this is not confidential, oh my God. Um, okay, great. Uh, so uh, they're, they're the same, except for you can see the previous has actually been canonicalized. So you can, three, it's been, you can see it's been through um, the processor. So the casing has been canonicalized and the spacing has been canonicalized and so forth. So that went through the tree and back up the tree. Okay, so now let's look and see how this all happens. Okay, and this is the usual workflow. All right, so we take up.sql and we pre-process it and we make up.temp, okay? Uh, remember up.temp before, okay? So then we create an upgrade script, okay? So this is just exactly the same as what we did just a moment ago, except for we use up.temp, okay? Now it includes the pre previous schema declarations, okay? So the previous schema processing is gonna give you additional errors in the event that you did something wrong, which will cause this to fail if there are mistakes, okay? And uh, I'm gonna demonstrate some mistakes, okay? Then if that succeeds, we're gonna generate the new previous schema. And all we do is this, dash dash RT schema, which um, ignores everything in the file except for schema and re-emits the schema, okay? And we just put it in previous.sql, okay? So this, if this works, we run this, this makes the previous.sql. Then we compile the upgrade. Okay, so remember the upgrade is still um, in the CQL language, right? So we're gonna compile that again to get C. Okay, and here's update.c, update.h, and this is where we generate update.inc because we added dash dash generate exports. So if dash dash generate exports is present, there's a third output here, okay? And that's gonna be the header file. So the, the .inc file will always be in sync. Then we're gonna pre-process do update. Okay, here I show a different way of doing it. You can, you can pipeline it. I actually usually don't like to do it this way because uh, the, the, the temporary file can be useful for diagnostics. Um, so even if you're doing automation, it's better to stick it in a temp file somewhere. And also if this exits early because of a syntax error, you don't wanna see the broken pipeline error, just a pain in the ass. So um, anyway, uh, so I don't usually do it this way, but you can do it this way, you know, it works. Um, and this is really a very simple one. So there's not much likelihood of error. Then we compile the C. Okay, and so you saw main.c, you saw do update.c. Okay, do update.c comes from here. So you saw the SQL, and then uh, we, we update.c came from uh, from that. And we make s demo, and away we go. And then we run it. And then we're gonna do this extra little thing. We're gonna open up the DB with SQLite 3, and we're gonna do dot schema, and we're gonna select star from SQL, uh, from schema facets. And I didn't put EOF here, but um, I guess I didn't really need EOF because I'm literally at the end of file, but okay, that should have EOF. Okay, so I think we, uh, we can now do dot up dot sh again, which will be a big fat no op. Yep. Okay, and now let's look. Uh, reporting differences, facet, no differences. Okay, see that? No differences right there. Okay, which is different than what we saw the last time. That's because we just tried to upgrade the same script again. Okay, and the CRC matched, so the whole thing did an early exit. So typically the upgrade can be very, very fast, right? Um, in most cases, no upgrade is needed. So you check the one row, check the CRC, boom, you're done. And uh, you can see, you know, the schema still is what it is. So here's our little file and we're gonna use up.sh. So now we're actually in a good position to demonstrate some things that you might try to do. Okay, had to take a quick break there. Um, so I'm gonna now just add something really simple to the existing schema and kind of get things moving. Uh, so the simplest thing we could do to kind of start the clock on versions is this. Uh, we're gonna do ID integer, that's pretty much it. Oh, and we're gonna, we're gonna make this um, at version one, okay? So this was our baseline at version zero and we're gonna now, we're gonna have something at version one. Great. Okay, so uh, that's pretty good. And let me just, uh, I'm gonna blow away our schema again. Oh, there's no, okay, great, already blown away. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just run the script. Okay, so we started with nothing. And now we have create table A and B, and we have a version one checksum and a version uh, zero checksum and uh, we're at schema version one and we have a new CRC and we can see here's the differences. We added these guys, schema version zero changed, version one changed. We upgraded the schema version and we upgraded the schema CRC. 
and so all kinds of goodness just happened. Let's take a look at the upgrade script that we generated. So update.sql. Um, this is probably the easiest thing to look at. So what's different? There's a table B declaration here, okay? And then facets the same, uh, all these helpers the same, the same, uh, the sa uh, facet saver the same, the same, all these helpers this, the same. So we're not gonna get anything different until we get to um, this guy. This is the triggers. Uh, baseline schema just to A, again the same. Okay, drop all triggers, again the same. So perform needed upgrades. That's where the changes begin. Okay, so still checking for a downgrade. Notice that now we're checking for if it's version greater than one, okay? Because this script is hard coded for version one. That's uh, the, that was the version number uh, that it w existed in the uh, in the source at the time. So, uh, and since this is generated, that can be hard coded. Um, in some sense, all of this is hard coded. Um, okay, so install the baseline schema, and the baseline schema number shouldn't have changed. I don't remember it, but uh, it shouldn't have changed. And then we look to see if we're um, if we're already on schema one. So we get the CRC for version one of the schema and see if it's there or not, okay? Now, this is actually important. Um, multiple things could potentially happen at version one. So, and I'll illustrate that. And we want them to merge. Um, so uh, the, the way we decide whether we're gonna, we're gonna run the schema version one upgrade is to check the CRC that we have for what we think is version one and um, that's basically CRCing all of the upgrade steps. Okay, so everything in here. So at the moment, that's just create table if not exists, B, okay? And then setting the thing. Okay, but let me uh, let me illustrate that there could be more, okay? And it's uh, after that, we set the schema version to one and set the overall CRC, and the rest is, again, the same with the diffs. So imagine you're working with a friend, okay? And uh, you're adding this table, but while you're adding this table, he adds this column, name to text uh, at create one. He's doing that in version one as well. That's perfectly legal, okay? So, and this is kind of important now. Okay, so let's look at, let's look at what happens when we do this. Okay, so when we upgrade, look at the differences that we have here, okay? Uh, the schema v1 and schema crc is all, are only the facets that change. So we re-ran version one, okay? And the current schema includes name two, there it is. Okay, so how did this happen? Let's look at the upgrade update script. And this is kind of important. So this is how merge, merges happen. Um, so, and because you can do lots of things in version one and people might be doing it sort of independently. So this, this part of the script for V1 Okay, uh, yum, 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 where are we uh, needed? Okay, so in upgrade to V1, we check to see if the CRC is this. Now, imagine you're one of the developers, okay? You added the table, okay? And then you ran an upgrade and it's fine. Now, if this was just checking to see if we're on version one, you would have applied your thing, you're on version one, and that upgrade would never run again. Meanwhile, the second developer, he does something else at version one, and he gets part, uh, he, he adds a column, okay? Uh, let's say she adds a column. Okay, so she adds a column, and he added a table. Great, so she ran a script to add the column, and she is on version one. You added a script to add a table, and you're on version one. When your changes finally merge, um, both of you think you're on version one, and both of you are now missing something. Now, probably no customer will ever see this because probably you won't ever deploy it out into the wild until you're finished with the verges. But in order to make this sane for developers, if two people add something in version one, you want to rerun the script. And the script is set up such that it can run more than once. And so it'll create B if it doesn't exist. Okay, great. And it'll create the column if it doesn't exist. So you know, there is no alter, alter table B add column if not exists, but you can just check the metadata and that's what this helper's for. 
Okay, so when you both run the second time, your, your CRC won't match, your version CRC won't match, you'll both run the script again, and um, she will get your table, and he will get her column. Okay, great. So that's important. Okay, so let's try some other things that are kind of erroneous, so, 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 um, to, so you can get a sense of what the protection is from the previous schema. Uh, so let's do this. Um, I'm going to just, I'm going to add a new table, create table C ID integer. Uh, yeah. Okay. Easy enough. That should do. All right. Dot slash up. Okay. Well, can't do that. Right. See, can't do that. It has to be at least version one. We moved on to version one. Okay. So if I want to add this table, it needs to be something like this. Okay. Great. So that's fine. So at create one, that's going to work. If I do that, now we're good and we've added it at version one. So now there's yet another thing that happened at version one. In fact, you could stay at version one all for a very long time. You only have to increase the version numbers if there's some side effect that you want to do um, that requires, you know, like a stable version at that point or that requires a certain ordering of the things to happen. Um, so actually, what, how might that happen? Okay, so let me as well, may as well just get into that. Um, so let's say that uh, we want to delete this at version 2. Okay, we don't need this table anymore. And furthermore, when we delete it, we want to make sure we run this uh, delete my code. Actually, this isn't going to work because I haven't got this defined. Um, I'd have to implement this somewhere, so it, it's not going to link, and I want it to continue to link. But you you can specify a procedure here that's going to run um, after this delete happens, okay? And um, here, I, I, I can illustrate it by running it manually and not doing the, the, uh, the, the check. So um, I'm just going to write this, and then if I cursor up to what we did before, uh, oh my goodness. Okay, history, but grep, CQL. Really? Thank you. Okay, so it is bang 2402. And you can see all kinds of stuff I've been doing. Look at that. You can see me debugging and all that jazz. Okay, 2402, right? Mm, looks good. Yeah. Okay. So I didn't do the previous schema check here. Uh, I'm not going to link it. The previous schema check did happen, uh, but it's not. it didn't actually replace previous schema. So let me just show you what happens in the update script if you add a delete proc. Delete, uh, delete my code, okay, is here. Uh, and so it declared that thing, okay? So that's going to be an external proc that's going to get called. So it declared it so that it could call it. Um, and right here, okay, um, it drops the table at version two, okay? And then it calls delete my code after the table's been dropped and then sets the facet to indicate that delete my code has been called. Okay, now once that happens, you've sort of created a sync point because um, you know, there's the world before that migration proc ran and the world after that migration proc ran. So you definitely want the schema to be incremented after that. Um, but it's possible to do several of them that can run simultaneously, but upgrading the version number will, um, incrementing the version number rather, will ensure that things happen in a particular order. So if there's one that must happen after, you know, that they're sequenced, so three must happen after two, then you can just upgrade the number. And the marginal cost of upgrading the number is very, very low. All, all that happens is there's an extra check here. Otherwise, the code is the same. So the actual upgrade code is identical. Um, it would just be in the previous method. So there's not really any code savings except for like this call, you know, and that test. Okay, so it's actually very economical to add new uh, version numbers. Okay, so um, I don't actually have that implemented and nor do I want to implement it right now. And so since I'm in cheating mode, I'm going to go to SQL. I'm going to get rid of this so I don't need it. Okay, and um, I didn't update the previous schema because I ran it manually. So if I do dot slash up dot sh now, I'll get a real schema upgrade. Okay, and it ran. And uh, sure enough, table B is gone. Okay, great. Because you can actually delete tables, right? 
and you can see in the differences, you know, the various things that got updated. So, uh, so schema v2, uh, there were schema v2 differences. Fabulous. Okay, so um, let's see some other stuff that could go wrong. Um, like here, there's lots of checks for consistency. Okay, so uh, for instance, uh, let's say I do this. Uh, I want to add a, a migrator. Okay, can't add a migrator after the fact, right? Nope, can't do that. Has to be there in, in the first place because some people will run with it and some people will run without it. And so there's no going back. Um, once it's been deployed, it's been deployed. Now, if you haven't deployed it yet, you could do revert, you get the idea, right? But once it's in the master previous schema, then it presumably it's out there. And so you really wanna be careful about this stuff. Okay, so I can't add a new thing. Uh, I can add new columns. Let's let's add a new column. Uh, name uh, text. Let's try to add a new column. Oops, can't add a new column. It needs to be added with create. Okay, right? Because we're already on the thing. Okay, so I'll add it with add create. I'm just being a pain in the butt here. Nope, can't do that either. Okay, it can't be less than the table. Okay, see the. So, you know the the table was created in one, and and we tried to add uh, we tried to add a column at the same time. Um, so really, this needs to be later if we're doing an at create. So um, and in fact, this is going to be impossible to do, right? Because we deleted it at two. Let's try to create this at two. Okay, no, I can't do that either, right? Okay, because the table was deleted at two. You can't you can't add a column at two. You you're deleting the table at two. So really, we can't add a column at all here. Okay, which makes sense because we're blowing away that table. What the hell are we doing? And ooh, what did I do here? I'm uh, my comma. Okay, great. So now we're back to normal. And what did we do? Differences none. Okay, great. So but here I could say uh, add a name text. Right, I can do that. Okay. Oh, no, I can't because I have to do this, right? Okay, uh, so I can say in version three. Okay, so now we're up to version three. Okay, great. So there we go. Schema three, schema V, all right. And what happened? Schema V3 happened. Look at that. Schema V3 ran and then the master schema version was changed to the master schema upgrade. And there we go. So we're doing all this great stuff. Okay, so uh, what can you do? You can add tables. You can add columns, you can uh, you can delete columns, but you can't really delete a column, right? Like when you delete a column, and do we have any deletes left? No, we don't. Okay, here, let's uh, let's do this, uh, delete four. Okay, great. Okay, so what happens when we try to delete a column? Okay, can you really delete the column? Look at the schema, is it gone? Doesn't look like it, right? It's still there. Okay, when we remove the whole table, it was gone. But when you delete a column, like what do you do? There, there is no SQLite to delete a column. So the, the column basically gets deprecated. So when pro, uh, the code is no longer to re allowed to refer to this column, even though it quote exists, okay? And we could have specified a migration proc here, okay? Uh, that would let us, you know, do something uh, when it was deleted, maybe move the data to somewhere else. Um, but we can't really, we can't actually delete it. Okay, and so all we can do is mark it deprecated and you're no longer allowed to use it. Um, and uh, so presumably you would, you know, wipe the contents if, if that's what you wanted to wipe. And you could either do it with a migration script or you could do it lazily after the fact. Really, you only have to do it in the context of schema migration if it's important for it to be synchronized with the schema migrate. If it can happen later outside of the context of schema migration in some lazy kind of fashion, that's usually better. Um, but anyway, you can you can do stuff like this. Okay, so uh, what about uh, other stuff? Uh, let's do create view. Um, actually, let me do let me show the other table form. So I'm going to do this: create table d id integer. Okay, and uh, I don't know name text. That sounds good. Okay, and I'm going to do this. Okay, so this is the other way to do schema stuff. Okay, and recreate means if the table changes, it has no precious data. So if it changes, blow it away and replace it with the new table. Okay, so there is no sort of upgrade, right? Now, as a consequence, you can do a lot more. Um, but 
it does mean that the data won't be preserved. So this is great for lots of internal tables that have not user data, you know, like whatever. Maybe you have stuff like uh, Messenger has stuff for synchronization management and stuff. And it's just internal state. It doesn't mean anything. And, you know, like it can be reconstituted. So you just blow it away, right? Um, so that's great. And uh, these are pretty straightforward. So let's see what one of those looks like. If we do this, uh, let's do it again. Okay, there's up. Okay, great. So there's our table D. Okay, now, uh, and notice that we didn't need create annotations. Okay, so we ran, um, we have a whole new stuff there. And if we look at the differences, okay, facet D table CRC, great. Okay, so uh, the D table has its own CRC. So you can kind of already guess how this is going to work. Let's look at update.sql and uh, let's look at uh, what were we on version four. Oh my goodness. Okay, drop table if exists D. Okay, so here's the, uh, there's a helper function for recreate tables, which got added. Okay, and um, it checks the CRC of each of them. Drop table if, uh, drop table CRC, table CRC. Okay, and uh, that's it, right? No problem. So if, the, if it doesn't match, drop it and recreate it. Okay, so very simple. And that means you can literally do anything. So, uh, you know, like I'm, I'm going to do something really goofy. Like I'm going to add a primary key. Okay, you normally can't do that, right? Because if I try to add a primary key, I'll show you in a second. There is no way to add a primary key, but you can certainly drop the table and recreate it. So, you know, so there we go. We recreated it. And now uh, there we have it. Uh, you know, facet text not null, primary key, and on D, ID integer primary key. Okay, so look again. Let me try to add a primary key here. Nope, can't do it. Okay, type is different between previous and current schema ID. Can't do it, right? Because there's no way to, to alter a table add, making it a primary key. There's, a, there's, no, there's no operation for that. In fact, and if this table has precious data, like messing around with primary keys is just going to ruin your life. Okay, so uh, so you can put a table on the recreate plan. In fact, sometimes tables need to be linked together. So I think I can take D and put it in a recreate group. Okay, let me put uh, foo. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, foo. Okay. I think I can put it in a group. Yeah, I can. Okay. Um, I can put it in a group. And now, okay, uh, if we look at what's going on in the facets, there's foo group, okay? This is no longer interesting because uh, D is now in foo group and there's the CRC for the foo group. And so if I do this, these are related tables. Uh, you know, let's call this D1, okay? It's in the same group, okay? So if, uh, uh, so let's look at the upgrader. So the way this works now is in the event that either of the two change, they both have to be updated. Okay, so a lot of times you have related schema and like it needs to stay in sync. So if you change the one, you know, maybe there's foreign keys or whatever, you can say this whole group, they all go together. If, they, if any of them are changed, just blow them all away. Okay, so, um, so that's great. And um, there's good enforcement there. So like you can have foreign keys between the same recreate group, but you can't have other people taking foreign key dependencies on something that's in a different recreate group because the whole thing could go, could blow up. Um, so it does lots of cool enforcement like that. Okay, so um, if we look here for foo again, okay, there's a CRC for all of foo. Okay, and if that CRC changes, there's the drop table, drop table, create table, create table. Okay, great. So very simple. Uh, recreate is very, very flexible. Okay, so what about the rest of the stuff? Uh, we can, you know, create a view. Create view v as select star from uh, d. Okay, great. Uh, Okay, so there's our view. We added it to the schema. We got an upgrade. Let's look at what our script looks like. Okay, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna find. Uh, how about I type vi correctly? Um, how about I look for create view, and we'll get a sense of what's going on. Okay, so here's create all views, which we just got. Okay, and drop all views, which is right there. 
Okay, so views are sort of implicitly on the recreate plan. In fact, um, just like triggers, before the upgrade even starts, it just blows away all the views. If there's going to be an upgrade, it blows away all the views and then puts them all back. Um, and that just, um, you know, avoids a whole lot of mess and, and just makes it really very, very, uh, makes the processing very, very straightforward. Um, it's always safe to blow away the views um, and, and put them back. So we just do that. So views are effectively on the recreate plan. The same is true of indices. Um, and if we, if we add an index, we'll see uh, it's very, very similar. So let me, uh, oops, let's look at schema.sql, uh, create index, I don't know, uh, I, uh, my index um, on a uh, name. I think that's the right syntax. Okay, so what did we do now? Uh, okay, uh, blah, blah, blah. There's our create index, my index on a name right there. Um, and that's interesting. This is part of the schema dump. It, it actually includes um, uh, includes the view right here in, in comments, because uh, it's not, I guess it's technically not part of schema, but it's still included in the thing. So anyway, th that's not me printing it. That's, um, that's what SQLite does. Uh, so let's look at the update um, and my index. Okay, so it was declared here like everything else. And then there's update drop all indices. Okay, Can we just because we drop them on the floor at the start and then we put them back at the end. Okay, so indices triggers, they're all on the recreate plan. And we always just, if they change, uh, we just blow them away. Now, um, in this particular case, we don't want to reconstruct all of the indices because that could be expensive. So actually each one has its own CRC. So what we're going to do is we're going to drop any that changed at the beginning, and then we're going to put back um, any that changed at the end. Okay. So, um, so basically we have this two pass thing. Okay. But basically that puts them on the recreate plan with views. We don't even CRC them because views are cheap. We just blow them away, put them back. Okay, and triggers are on exactly the same form as indices. And they all happen in a fairly uh, orderly kind of fashion. Um, and, you know, that would appear, um, you know, the extra drops would appear in there. All right, so uh, the last thing I should mention is there's a directive for doing ad hoc migrations um, that you could in, print, in principle put here. I forget what the syntax is, uh, but it's something like ad hoc migration. Uh, yeah, at ski, I don't know, I'll have to look it up. Ad hoc migration, like this, a version number like seven, and then a procedure foo. Okay, and this says, when you get to seven, call this. Okay, and um, this presumably does some important thing that isn't necessarily associated with any piece of schema. Uh, maybe you're not doing a delete then, maybe you're doing a refactor, maybe you're doing a cleanup, I don't know, whatever. Um, but you can cause a thing to happen at a particular version like this. Okay, so that's just a migration um, and again there's enforcement like once you once you make it you can't get rid of it you can't change its name you can add another one um, but you can't delete them and stuff because like the, really the procedure has to be locked down and you'll notice that there is no way to make the end schema the only way to get to the schema is to go through the upgrade steps you start with a baseline and you add version one version two version three version four so everyone gets the schema the same way every time um, and that means, uh, like, if there's deleted columns, everyone will have the deleted columns. Um, and uh, that means that the upgrade script is always well tested because if anything were to go wrong with the migrators or whatever, everyone would hit them and any bugs would be revealed. Uh, there's no kind of shortcut. And it also means the schema can be 50% uh, smaller because there don't, doesn't have to be the full schema and the not full schema. All right, so I'm going to do one more little thing here. Uh, oops. And I th hopefully this will work. Going a little bit off script, but what the heck, um, to the extent that I even had a script. Okay, so when we're compiling the upgrade right here, I'm going to do this. Okay, so, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so this creates an exactly equivalent script, uh, only it will be a hell of a lot less readable. Uh, oh, okay. I don't want update.sql. I want update.c. Okay. So, wow. Okay. So look at this business. 
So you could guess what this looked like before. Maybe it would have been better if I'd showed you what this looked like without the fragments. But okay, so here is a bunch of common strings that happened in your upgrader. Okay, now as it happens, the, the upgrade steps, they have these same tokens over and over and over again. And in many cases, the schema table names are very similar, um, you know, and all that stuff. So uh, this is a bunch of string fragments uh, that happened in your schema, okay? And um, then when we do a prepare, we do a prepare from fragments and we have this hex coded thing which says which of these guys you need to concatenate from, okay? And there's like a, a binary encoding for like what the offset is in that little table. Okay, so the most common things tend to be at the front of the table so they can be encoded in a very short uh, offset format and the, the more rare things happen at the bottom. Okay, so um, these little upgrade from fragments, okay, uh, let you create a string sort of at random from those pieces. Um, now, it, you, you might have been able to do like Lempel Ziv or something like that to just compress the whole file, but uh, then the whole thing ends up being uncompressed. Um, and this is actually very good at finding commonality. So um, this basically does exactly the same prepare that it would have done. And in fact, it tells you in the comment what it would have been. Select exists from SQLite master where table name equals whatever. That turns into this. And that's much shorter than that. Okay. Now, if your schema is large, you know, hundreds of tables, dozens of columns, um, you know, the, the file can get quite big. So this compression strategy can be very, very effective. And um, it lets you, you know, um, have basically shared string fragments between the thing. You can actually do this uh, dash dash compress option on any output, but usually there's just not enough text in any one file uh, for it to be, you know, very, very useful. So uh, this can save you quite a bit, but it's exactly equivalent. Um, you know, it's just less readable. So here's the fragments and here's what it would have been in the comments. Okay, so you can see exactly what this is going to expand to. You know, so if you're debugging, you know, you don't have to be like, oh my God, what is that? It's, it's this. Okay. So let me put it back. Uh, and that, you know, doesn't infect, affect validation in any way if this is in the generation of the C code. So let's do this one more time. Great. Okay. Uh, update SQL. Okay. Now all that business is going to be gone. Oops, sorry. Update.c. All that business is gone, the big table's gone, and you can see, you know, the usual things. Now, all of these, like, you know, let's look for this. Perform needed updates. Okay, so here's, again, a comment that is the text of the upgrader. It always includes the full text of what the SQL was before the procedure. Um, and you can you can see what this guy's all going to be like, okay? Uh, it's got to fetch results because it returns a result set. This is the real procedure. And it's going to be really very straightforward, like call a helper, call a helper, call a helper. Here's the drop. Here's the insert. Here's the install the baseline. And then, okay, here's the thing for version one. Okay. And then here's the create table if not exists. Okay, bind and execute, right? It's CQL exec, CQL exec. All of these are going to be just run CQL exec. Almost all of them are CQL run exec. Okay, just execute that thing, execute that thing. Um, you know, with folded literals and stuff like that. Okay, so, and then recreate the tables, call the helper proc. Okay, almost all of them are just this, you know, CQL exec. In many cases, um, there's there's just not even any parameters. Um, so very, you know, very sort of straightforward. Okay, uh, and then the, the master for it, uh, do my update, okay, is also, you know, gonna return a result set. Um, and yeah, that's it. Update, it calls the my update if needed. Um, and then, you know, does the call, returns the results at, or returns no differences. Okay, so very straightforward. The C, boil, the C code is very much boilerplate because if you look at the SQL, I mean, it, it's actually very straightforward. There's very limited control flow. There's some ifs. Mostly it's just calling procedures that are just uh, doing pieces of SQL like this you know, like this guy, you know, CQL recreate tables. Okay, that guy, 
okay? This is like an if and a couple creates. So that's gonna be CQL exec, CQL exec, CQL exec, you know, wrap with an if. So the actual C structure becomes very, very simple. But you can see it's much easier for uh, the compiler to produce this um, than it is to produce the C directly. And doing it in two stages like that means you get this nice interim thing that you can look at and, um, you know, if there are bugs, generally the bugs are here rather than in the C translation. And, you know, it's much easier to spot issues um, in this part. Okay, so the combination of validating um, that the schema makes sense um, with usual semantic rules, uh, that it's self-consistent and that it's also consistent with the previous schema uh, gives you really rich protection and you can be confident that your upgrade script is actually going to work. Um, and it lets you move forward in all the ways that uh, SQLite lets you move forward. Um, you can use recreate if you want. Um, you can use uh, uh, create and then if you're on the create plan, you can add and remove columns, uh, although deletes are just logical. And you can have migration procedures all the way along. Interestingly, a migration procedure um, has to see the schema as it existed during the version that it ran at. So, for instance, you might have a migration procedure that ran at version 5 and uh, operates on columns that were then subsequently deleted on version 10. But it's okay because when that migration proc, the schema runs, when that migration proc runs, the schema will be sort of at version 5 at that time. And when you declare the procedure, um, there's a directive that lets you say, I want to see the schema as it existed at version 5 because I'm a migrator. Great. Um, and so um, you'll uh, see the, you'll be allowed to access tables that were visible at version 5, even if they were deleted at version 10, because in your world, if you will, they haven't been deleted yet. So that's why the, all those directives remain in the schema. You don't just delete the columns. You know, I guess that's the thing I didn't up, uh, didn't demonstrate. Okay, so, so one more quick demonstration, and then I'm going to sign off here. I'm just going to try to delete a column. Okay, I'll, I'm going to just um, I don't know. I'll delete this one. Okay, great. So it's effectively deleted. I commented it out. Okay. Okay, that is whoa. Oh, is that a recreate table? Yeah, it is a recreate table. Okay, I expect I expected that to fail. On a recreate table, you really can do that. Okay, so on, a, but on a create table, okay, I'm gonna comment that out. I had to get rid of the comma. Okay, this table is not on the recreate plan, so um, life is stricter. Okay, and it says no, nope, no, nope, you can't do that, right? You, you you can't just remove name. If you want to get rid of name, you have to mark it with that delete. Well, okay, as it happens, we have marked it with that delete. So. Um, oop. So if we put this back, then we should be back in business again. Okay, and yes, sure enough. And in fact, when we ran, it should report that there are no differences. Uh, oh, no, there were some differences. Oh, probably because um, the uh, I changed the recreate table. Yeah, I, that's exactly what happened. Uh, the foo group changed, right? Yeah, the foo group changed because the guy that I changed was in the foo group, this guy. And I changed him and then changed him back. Okay, so, um, but that's fine. So there, lots of flexibility with recreate, but the, you pay a price, right? The, and because the, the data will be blown away. But for many tables, um, it's fine, right? Like there's lots of uh, tables that are sort of you know, system tables, session management tables, whatever, that like they have no precious data between invocations of your program. So they can all be on the recreate plan, which gives you tons of flexibility and you, you don't have to feel like you're locked in. You can change foreign keys, you can change primary keys, you know. If you try to add something here, like a foreign key after the fact, you can't add a foreign key after the fact. It's just not allowed. There's no operation to add a foreign key after the fact. So any attempt to add new constraints down here, not going to work. You're going you're to get errors. So and but it'll you know it'll save you from those mistakes. All right, more than enough for one video. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll uh, see you next time. I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. Um, I'll think of something. Right. Thanks for watching. Bye.